lifetime subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. We're going to be talking about treasury bonds today, folks, to start off the show. Also, I'm going to be doing Tom O'Brien's show at 3 p.m. today, New York time, setting in for Tom. And then tomorrow we'll be doing our all-day session. I'll talk about that in just a second. But let's just chat here about these treasury bonds, folks. You can see here this is about the last four years. You'll notice how the top was made right up here at this big ABCD pattern at this 1.618 expansion up there at about 182, I believe, is where it was. And they were telling us at that time that we were looking at negative interest rates. You were going to give the bank your money, and they were going to charge you for holding it and was not even going to tell you whether they would give you your money back or not. That might still happen, folks, because, you know, when Obama was in office, he passed the Dodd-Frank bill, which basically there's a clause in there that says the government can come into your savings account and take your, a percentage of your money away to help run the company. If you don't believe me, look at the bill and read it because they can do that. So keep as little as possible as you can in the bank account. Uh, people are asking me where to put it. I think in a good brokerage firm because they, they're not going to be uh, from that bill. They can't, they can't get it out of a brokerage account, but they can get it out of a savings account. So, hey, that's my two cents worth, and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, here's where I'm trying to show you folks. Uh, the target on this was 129 and change, I believe, down at this area here, depending on where you set your marker between 129 and 128. What's One of two things is going to happen. One is we're going to have a little bit of a rally here, maybe the 3.8 rally up here to maybe even as high as uh, 148, something like that, because there's a lot of people that are short. And uh, when the short covering rally happens, bada bing, bada boom. So we need to be very, very careful. Today's action, as a matter of fact, was one of the trade setups that we were really looking to see uh, in the Treasury bonds. And I'll get this up here for you for just a second. And oh, dear. No, I won't. I'm going to have to do that a little bit later. Let me just show you uh, the two that we were watching for tonight. Uh, this was in the middle of the night, folks. Okay, so this is an hourly chart on the uh, crude oil, and I wanted to show you because we had some really big, big moves in some of these things. Well, the Dow, the Dow moved 400 points for God's sakes. I mean, you know, these are not. Uh, non-liquidity or non-volatile times anyway you can see the 382 retracement that we had that led a you know pattern down here at this area of around uh, 82 dollars a barrel and if you f subscribe to the 24 7 newsletter and listen to the videos that i said last night the thing that you want to do in crude oil is to watch the action in the natural in the in the gasoline contract and watch the action in the heating oil and then watch the action in the crude oil and that's exactly what had happened today and these are the kind of things that we have to do tomorrow when we're doing our live trading because that gives us an idea of where we really want to go now, i just want to show you just to show you what we were talking about here is the hourly chart on the gasoline contract itself okay now let's get this up here this is a pretty good size and this is gasoline for automobiles and trucks and stuff there was your 78% retracement, folks. You see, we came in here, hit it spot on. Now, the crude oil, it didn't hit it spot on. It went substantially below it. And so what you have to do is I'll just show you how we try to handle that. And these are some of the things that we'll be talking about tomorrow. And we're watching ABCDs, and we're also watching market action. Okay, so we know that our beeper went off. When natural, when the heating oil made a new low for the whole move, folks. Let's let's rephrase that, Larry. 
they made a new low over the past several weeks, okay? And this one did the same thing. But this didn't stop at 78% level. It went lower, okay? But look what happened once it went back above that 78 with that long-ranging bar. That's where you really had your low risk because, A, you're trading in the short-term trend, and, B, you know what your risk is, which is down here. If you buy it here, you're sitting with a potential $1,500 loss. If you buy it on this pattern right here, which is what John Hill called, my mentor, he called that a yum-yum trade. In other words, when it exceeds 75% of the previous downwards move, they've trapped some people. In other words, when this goes down all the way and exceeds more, I, I use 78%, but if it exceeds more than 78%, they've trapped all these people. And that's what we're trying to do is to find a place to enter and not risk very much. If this was coming down really quietly with some swings and stopped right here a few times, I would say, yeah, buy it. But when it's coming straight down like that, that's trying to catch a falling safe, folks. And that's a tough one. And we're not, we're not in that business. The reason why we do this program here of the, of the uh, you know, trying to make money for everybody is years ago, I'm talking 30 years ago, Tom, Tom <laughs> Mark Douglas and I were, were doing these in Chicago. We did two a year. We limited it to 15 people. And uh, we did a, a full week, five days a week. And the guarantee was that if we were profitable at the end of the week, then the person got their money back. And we charged $5,000 for the week. And it was held in Mark's building up at the penthouse area. They had a beautiful office area. And Paula did everything. They catered the meals for us. This is where we uh, met the hockey players from the 1980 Olympic team. Uh, we had three of them there in that group out of the uh, 15 people that we had. And uh, so it was it was really great to you know meet these guys and do that stuff. But we felt this was Mark's idea. He said, look, if what we have really works, he said, you know, they shouldn't have to pay if we're not profitable for the week. And uh, we we did really good. We, we were profitable on four of the five days. Uh, the fifth day we were profitable, but at the very end uh, it was a money supply or something came out and we had a, a small loss in something. And so we ended up losing just a few hundred dollars on the day. But we made quite a bit more than the 5000 on the week, which we were happy. So we did two of those. Then later on Mark moved out here and started writing his book and stuff. And so we didn't get to it. So when I started doing these three years ago with uh, uh, Tiger TV, uh, Tiger TFNN, I said, let's try it this way. I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I wanted to make a guarantee, but TFNN says we can't do that for legal reasons. I say, okay, well, if we lose, we'll just give them a free one, you know, if we come up. Well, we give them a free one anyway. If you sign up one, you get the next one for free. My main goal here is to show you that these things work, folks. I can give you proof. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you some real validate why these patterns work and why you should pay attention to them. You know, you can add them to your program that you're using or you can use them separately. But if you pay attention, you're going to be able to see, you know, what we're looking at. So that's the main thing. Now, I'm going to leave you before we come to the break. I wanted to show you. We always talk about the 382s, okay? And here's what I want to show you. Last night, now this is a short-term trade because you're looking at a two-minute chart over a period of about uh, four and a half to five hours. But look at this, folks. After the market made a high, look at this. It made a 382 retracement, a 382 retracement, beautiful ABCD down, and then went up and took out these highs. Hello, operator. That's volatility. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Mr. Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, I'm going to explain to you one of the reasons I've been doing this teaching for so long is the people that I've met. Oh my gosh, I've, I can count on my one hand with three fingers up, three people out of the thousand that I've met or more and taught how to do this stuff uh, that have just been really rewarding to me and shared so much great information. One of the reasons why I do this with TFNN is because of the way they like to bring stuff to you. But I brought up these pictures of these flashcards that were developed, developed by Billy Belton and his, his son down in uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, each of those, we have a set of, uh, a, set of a set of 12 showing all the patterns why they, you know, how, what you want to look for, where to put your stop, what your profit objective is, all of that is outlined ahead of ahead of time so that you're able to do that. So you'll have these flashcards that you can look at and hold them up. After you've seen these flashcards work after about three or four months, I mean, you don't have to look at them because it automatically shows you what you're looking at. It's just really amazing. Today, uh, I was going to show you what was happening today during the market because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Nobody else does either. But as we look at this, let me show you today's action. And I wanted to show you what we, some of the things that we're going to be talking about right here. Now, this is a, uh, I believe it's a four-minute chart on the E-mini S&P. And I could put up the flashcard, but you're going to see those tomorrow. But you can see the three drive to a bottom pattern. There's drive one. There's drive two. There's drive three coming in right up here. And where was the top made? Right there at 36.05. And it dropped 40 handles, folks, all the way down here to 37 or 38, uh, 35 handles all the way down to the level right here. But overnight, look at this. You had a beautiful A, B, C, D, the simple A, B, C, D. There's your pullback. You see how your BC leg is equal to the BC leg? That's a 135 pattern coming in exactly at the 61% retracement. This is a 382 pullback right at the opening. And bada bing, bada boom, and there you go. And that's what we're doing here. These patterns work on any time frame you pick as long as it's actively traded. 
you know, penny stocks are pretty actively traded, but I have never done penny stocks. I know they work on penny stocks because I've analyzed a few, but as long as it's liquid and people are trading it, you're going to see these ratios work because it's Mother Nature itself, and that's the best way to look at these things. Now, another thing that Billy Vinton has given, given to us is this, and I need to show you this because this is the open interest that we have going on here in the market for uh, the silver and the gold. And I want to get this up here and show you. Now, you'll notice here, you see how the open interest in the gold is dropping and the open interest in the silver is dropping. You see that? Well, when you look at the little formula up here, this is the formula that determines the importance of open interest. It says, if open interest is falling and prices are falling, the market is actually strengthening. And that's why we were interested in being buyers of gold today. And the reason why is because of this, besides the fact that gold had completed the big A, B, C, D that we've been waiting for for months pretty much. And uh, that's why we were watching it very, very closely. So all I need to do now is to hopefully get this up and you'll be able to see where that pattern was. This comes right out of the newsletter itself. And uh, we'll show you, there it is right there. By the way, Tim Boss will be our guest today. I'll be on the show tomorrow. There'll be no program Wednesday. Uh, I don't think I have a guest, but I believe I have. Uh, I can't remember what. I think I have. Maybe Adrian Tilgray, maybe on Thursday. Anyway, there's your big ABCD right here at uh, the low is 61. It measured to 68. Today's low is a 78% retracement. Now, what I was looking for, is I was really bullish gold coming in. So I said, Buy it, you know, if it opens lower and if it goes below the 382 pattern, you know, look to buy it back on the retracement. Unfortunately, we got that and acted pretty good. How long is it going to this, act this way? I don't know. But nobody else does either. These patterns are predictive in nature, but they don't give you the holy grail. That's There's something that you're just not going to find that. Another reason why it looks very interesting to be long gold and silver right now I'll get this up here and show you the silver market. It's Even though it's much lower, it's finally acting bullish. And all of these are acting in context with the fact that, uh, you know, with the market as low as they are, why are they rallying in here? Well, open interest has been dropping and prices have been dropping, but now it's turned. So this could be a sign that maybe it's starting to go. Now, it's a holiday over in London, so the London Metals Exchange – that controls all these prices and believe me if you don't believe they control them you know do some study on it because they do it through you know futures and stuff to keep the prices where they want them but if they lose control someday and many people think they might that uh, that's what the the news is that we're probably going to be going up into uh, a lot higher prices remember since i've been on here to tfnn since 2007 I said, anytime you can buy silver, uh, silver rounds, the silver coins for 14 bucks, I said buy it because they, that's, they're beautiful, uh, they're pieces of art, and they also have validity. The fact that they're 90% silver, so I, even if they go back down to 15 again or 14, buy it again because uh, they, they don't make it anymore, folks. So it's going to be really interesting. Now the ETF for this, the GDX, has not moved yet. So there's no big deal that nothing's happening. But with that open interest dropping like it is, I have to pay attention to that because you don't see that very often. That means there's no new short sellers coming into the market, folks. Maybe that's because prices are lower. I don't know. But you got to pay attention to that formula because, you know, we know that when prices go up and open interest drops, the party's over. It's just a matter of when they hit that last pentata and they pick up the toys and leave the game because uh, the game is over once that happens. So that's not happening here. It's just the opposite. So we're thinking that we're going to get a pretty good move here. Also, the uh, the crude oil, long term, if you take a look at those charts that we showed uh, in our newsletter and stuff, because it was very important here to see this. Uh, I'm going to bring this up so you can see it again here. This is the heating oil. I put this one in the newsletter to watch for this because uh, that's exactly what had happened today. Now, what we did today is we made a slightly lower low than we did here way back in August, just slightly by about a maybe less than a dollar. Well, I think it was about a dollar. 
which is not much in, in heating oil. And now we've rallied, folks. We've rallied, uh, we've rallied 20 cents already. That's a huge amount. So that tells us there's a pretty good double bottom here in place now uh, for heating oil, uh, 786 in crude and a 786 in gasoline. And it looks like they got a chance here for a pretty big rally. How much of a rally? God only knows, and she's not telling. That's all I know for sure. We will have Tim Boss as our guest. I do want to show you uh, uh, one other chart, and that is the uh, dollar index, because we are at, uh, they're talking about this dollar index on every single news thing that we have here today. We got the Fed coming in, of course, on Wednesday, and there's a big three drive to a top pattern. This is the 78% on the weekly. The little pullback we had here was nothing more than a 382 retracement, so it's still bullish. We got back to almost 110 today, and have been holding around that level. It looks like the dollar is still strong and nothing to change it. Take a break here. On our break, we'll have Mr. Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly, as our guest. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Tim Boss, the Financial Cycles Weekly, on the line today. Tim, are you there? I am indeed. Welcome, sir. How are you today? I am very good, my friend. What are you looking at today, Sun, Mercury? Oh, those are my favorite ones. That's Compass, yeah, isn't it? we've got all kinds of good stuff going on here. Let me see if I can uh, grab my slide deck and back it up to the beginning. Let's see if we can start with something like this here. There we go. Something uh, uh, We're kind of doing this on the fly here, and uh, we've been working 
uh, to look at the market situations a, a little bit uh, uh, with these uh, dynamics coming up. Let's see if I can actually get this fixed where it will actually change slides. That might not be a bad idea. Let's just give this a shot and see. Maybe? Okay. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah, we wanted to start with a quick commercial <laughs> uh, because I, I, uh, over the weekend I was working on a special report here uh, and we're going to make it available free to everybody who's attending here today or watching the recording after the fact. Uh, we uh, slapped in a, a quickie email ad address uh, or a URL up there at the top. It's bit.ly slash rxcrash and uh, that's all lowercase except for the R and the C-R-A-S-H. And this is a quick uh, report on the current market conditions vis-a-vis uh, -vis the mercury retrograde dynamic that we're in the midst of right now. And we're seeing some very, very interesting uh, parallels with that. Uh, so we've got this available as a, as a PDF, and it's uh, uh, right up to the minute here, uh, actually before the opening bell today, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're still uh, looking at some very interesting correlations. want everybody to have this information on hand, primarily because of one big factor. We had Mercury go retrograde uh, back on uh, September 9th, 10 days ago, uh, Friday, a week ago, uh, and uh, it did so at, at a very, very uh, interesting uh, uh, point of dynamic here. Uh, of course, we measure planetary motion uh, in celestial longitude by positioning it in the various degrees of the zodiac. Uh, most of us are familiar with the zodiac, so if you're a a sun sign Leo or an Aquarius or a Taurus or a Gemini, whatever it may be, all we're saying is that the sun at the time of your birth was in that zodiac sign. And we got 12 of them in a row covering 360 degrees of a circle, 365 days of the year. And so uh, that's how we determine what sign you are and who you're compatible with and all that kind of stuff. Well, we also note the exact degrees of important events like Mercury retrograde stations. Now, when we did our book a few years back, Mercury, Money, and the Markets, uh, we uh, added to that a 201-year ephemeris of Mercury retrograde uh, stations and the, all of the critical degrees listed for that. So it's easy using that book to look up uh, the degree of any Mercury event and see when that has happened before. Long-winded way of saying here <laughs> is that uh, when we, I checked out uh, oh, eight degrees of Libra, okay, let's see how many times that happened before, and I discovered uh, that since 1900, this has only happened once before, and that there was a Mercury station at eight degrees of Libra exactly. So I got kind of curious about that because the date that that occurred, uh, when we last had a retrograde station, when we last had a Mercury station, at eight degrees of Libra was in 1929. In aye, aye, aye. <laughs> uh, coincidentally, in October, October the 17th, which was one week to the day before the Black Thursday uh, market crash of historic proportions. And so uh, we're not saying this is uh, a, a cause and effect thing here. And of course, past performance doesn't. Uh, guarantee future results, but this is what the past looked like. The only time before that we had a Mercury station at eight degrees of Libra, and the next one's not coming up until uh, 2054, so we've got a few decades to wait for the next time around, right? But right now, this is what's relevant, because it made that station uh, on the 17th of uh, October 1929, and you can see from our trading chart here over the next four weeks, the Dow uh, industrial average lost, what, 46% of its value. It was a very, very big crash, even though today those those uh, price numbers look pretty low. They're kind of puny by comparison to the astronomical <laughs> numbers that we're seeing right now. But from that day's perspective, and, you know, they, they have all the uh, the tales of what happened on Wall Street. Uh, we do have documentation uh, that uh, at least 11 people jumped off of the top of buildings and committed suicide that day uh, in the crash because they were wiped out financially. And, of course, uh, there, were, there were more casualties uh, in terms of uh, portfolios, finances, and human life uh, in the, the weeks and, and even years of following that. It's kind of ushered in uh, the Great Depression in a very, very significant uh, way. Uh, so again, we're not saying that it's a corollary or a, a, a sure thing here, but it's certainly worth, worth looking at. 
you know, Tim, uh, people don't realize it took the market 24 years to make a new high. Didn't make a new high until 19, what, 53 or 54, I think, uh, Somewhere uh, there. you know, after the big war and stuff. So, you know, it's uh, these things can be life changing for sure. But, you know, we're seeing some, you know, really incredible volatility in these markets. I mean, to see the Dow drop, what, 1,400 points in one day. I mean, of course, from this level, it's not very much because in the crash of 87, you know, it dropped, uh, what, 16 percent, which was 555 points that day. My 16 percent now would be a drop of 4,800. That would definitely make the evening news. Absolutely. We do want yeah. to pay attention to that kind of thing. Of course, now we no longer have evening news as much as uh, Internet news day all day long. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Show up on your feed, as they say, right? <laughs> but, yeah, no, and so far this year, uh, the Dow is off since the first of the year, uh, over 13 percent. The S&P is down uh, 19 and a quarter percent. The NASDAQ is down by almost 28 uh, percent so far this mm -hmm. year. So uh, the numbers uh, you know, pale by comparison if you just look at the actual uh, uh, pr price amounts. But percentage-wise, we're seeing some pretty substantial action uh, going on in the markets. So we're looking at this, keeping it in perspective again. Uh, make sure that you uh, get a, a copy of that uh, a free report. Uh, because uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that uh, and, and actually show you this chart and some other work that we've done uh, with that. Uh, so make that make sure that happens. Okay. So great. We don't we don't stop there. Right? Uh, we do have a major major inflection point coming up at the end of this week, and this is something that we've been tracking uh, for some time. Uh, we were talking over, well over a month ago about uh, Bitcoin and the a potential for a price pullback. Uh, into the 23rd of uh, September. We identified that because of its uh, 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 cycle work and also its coincidence with uh, the autumnal equinox. So we call it the Libra equinox. Uh, in the northern hemisphere, it's the first day of uh, autumn or fall. In the southern hemisphere, it's the first day of spring. So just to be uh, 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 <laughs> on equal footing with our friends down under, we refer to it as the Libra equinox. It is the, the date the sun moves into Libra and makes that seasonal change. Very, very important date in W.D. Gann studies. He loved paying attention to the solstices and equinoxes, so it catches our attention there. Uh, so we want to look at these three events that all occur between uh, the closing bell uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern uh, on Thursday the 22nd and the opening bell at 9.30 a.m. on Friday the 23rd. Uh, the market shut down for the day, and then all this stuff breaks loose Thursday night, Friday morning, before the market opens. This is why we're calling this a major inflection point. Not only do we have the equinox, we also get the inferior conjunction of the sun and Mercury. Let's take a break. Tim, I want to ask you about combust when we come back, okay? Very good. We'll be right back, folks. Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Really great information. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, what was the name of the Indian astrologer that talked about Combus, which was this inferior conjunction? I cannot remember her name right now. Uh, uh, I know it's a. Don't recall. <laughs> well, all I remember is that Frank Tauscher, who was a really strong Baptist and really hated astrology, he uh, loved this. He said, I don't care what they call this. He said, this thing works in the market, <laughs> is what he used to tell me. And we'd laugh well, about well, it, you know. But. Yeah. Uh, so Actually, anyway. uh, this this notion of, of combustion or, or the, of of planet being combust uh, uh, has quite a history uh, to it, uh, uh, both in the Eastern and Western astrological traditions. Uh, we uh, study uh, horary astrology uh, techniques and, and look at the astrology of the Middle Ages. Uh, this was one of the key concepts that was used uh, then. Uh, so technically speaking, uh, any planet. Uh, that is within eight and a half degrees of the sun uh, is considered combust. That is, it's getting too close to the sun and it kind of burns up. It's a very, very negative kind of dynamic. Uh, now, the, the rule of thumb here is also it must be in the same sign as the sun. Uh, so, for example, if we got the sun at uh, 29 degrees of Cancer uh, and Mars at uh, you know four degrees of, 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 of Leo, uh, they're within eight degrees of each other, but they're in two different signs, and so the combust does not apply there. Uh, so what happens is when we get a planet in the same sign as the sun, within eight and a half degrees, it becomes extremely negative, it debilitates that planet. One way of looking at it is uh, it's a state of blindness. In other words, if we stare directly into the sun, we can't see crap. <laughs> in other words, we're, yeah. we're completely blinded by that. We get these little after images on our eyeballs and whatnot. Dangerous thing to do, by the way. Don't don't recommend it. Uh, but uh, so there's always an indication that something's hidden there. We're not getting the full picture, and the planet that's associated with the sun is in a very dangerous position and considerably weakened. Now, a weird thing happens in the middle of the combust when you get right down to that conjunction of the two planets. And we're talking about the planet being within 17 and a half minutes of arc from the sun, uh, just a little, about a quarter of a degree, a little bit more than a quarter of a degree. It's sitting right next to the sun, and that, that's a situation called Kazemi, which is at the heart of the sun. And it's a very mysterious thing because this is of enormous benefit. It's like uh, you get to sit right next to the king and kind of snuggle up next to him, and everything the king does protects you along the way. Uh, so this is a highly favorable thing, but it lasts a very short period of time. 
And the interesting thing is it's surrounded by this combust area, which is incredibly dangerous. You, you got to, you know, get, get past the guard, cross the boat, escape the, the watchdogs, etc., to get there, <laughs> so, so to speak, before you can snuggle up to the king. So uh, it's wow. an interesting phenomenon. When we have the inferior conjunction of the sun and Mercury, uh, the two planets form a conjunction. The inferior conjunction only happens while Mercury is retrograde. Later on in the cycle, we get the superior conjunction. And what's happened is Mercury is conjoining the Sun, but from the backside, so to speak. So it's a little farther away from the Sun than, than uh, to us. And so uh, during that retrograde phase is when we get that inferior conjunction. Very, very potent time uh, in our work. And then happening, and that happens, uh, what, uh, about five, six hours after the exact time of this equinox. And then a few more hours after that, uh, shortly after 8 a.m., about an hour and a half before the market opens this Friday, we get Mercury, which is in retrograde motion, backing yeah. up out of the sign of Libra, moving back into Virgo. We call it a retrograde ingress, an interesting yeah. phenomenon there as well. You uh, know, when you, when you talk about the perfection of this, uh, I went down to Chichen Itza down in southern Mexico. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I was amazed that, that saw this giant pyramid, and as the sun hit the top of the pyramid exactly at noon on the 22nd of September, it forms a shadow effect showing the snakes going down oh, exactly wow. in perfect. <laughs> oh, wow. You can go on, you can go on and uh, hit, hit it on Google and see it, but it's really spectacular to think somebody could do this with such precision to build those things so the bricks would act as shadows and it's just amazing and then it goes on to the next one but it, I went there twice because I didn't believe it the first time <laughs> I, I like I like Cancun anyway but uh, that was really uh, oh, really something I, I couldn't believe that. it someone could be that smart to do something like that excellent excellent yeah that'd be, I'll, I'll put that on my bucket list make sure to check that one out yeah. uh, personally well, that's a good thing so the other factor, of course, we want to note here is this weekend we have a new moon coming up uh, Sunday evening, uh, shortly before uh, 6 p.m. Eastern uh, time. And also uh, Rosh Hashanah, of course, begins at sundown of uh, that day uh, as well. Oh, my well. goodness. Wow. So we pay it. Now, That's you've uh, written some yeah. stuff about the Rosh Hashanah uh, cycle, haven't you, at one point? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I looked at Rosh Hashanah, you know, buy on Rosh Hashanah, sell on Yom Kippur, but it only works about 53% of the time. But the, the difference is it gives you pretty good timing dates. In other words, it's a good day on Rosh Hashanah, it's a good day on Yom Kippur. But, uh, you know, they're, they're just trading, they're short-term trading days. As far as a per percentage bias being buying a Rosh Hashanah, you know, selling Yom Kippur, no, that's only like 50, 51 percent, as I recall. Okay. And I haven't. Okay. I just look at the timing. If I've got a pattern at one of those dates, I'll take the trade. If I don't, I won't. It's that simple. <laughs> okay, very good. Right, so, yeah, we all, always have to do our technical work, and, and we never use these astrological factors in a vacuum. I think that's the biggest mistake most traders make when they get engaged with astrology in the markets, is they think it's a magic bullet, and, and because I got this, I don't need to pay attention to anything else. <laughs> that, yeah. That's wrong. <laughs> you know, so, uh, we we can, can lose a lot of money that way. In order. Uh, Amen. Anyway. So we got all this stuff piling up here right at the end of this week, extending into the weekend. Uh, whether we see a, a, a bottom in the market and a bounce uh, coming on Friday or whether the following Monday on the 26th uh, will be the, the critical date to take a look at. Don't know for sure yet. Uh, but we did uh, do a little bit of back testing work with this. We're still exploring all of the potential here. Uh, with these inferior conjunctions, we're able to go back and look at all of them with the S&P. I think we got about 150 examples, something like that, uh, that we're looking at here. So this is pretty wow. good uh, statistics with this, right? You bet it is. It sure and is. so typically the, the, the bottom comes in the day before the inferior conjunction. Uh, so we'd be looking at this on, on Thursday or, or Friday uh, with the potential for the S&P uh, to, to uh, hit a trading bottom and then take off from there. That first week afterwards uh, certainly looks promising in terms of a more parabolic move. Uh, and again, for short-term trading positions, uh, the fact that this occurs along with Rosh Hashanah and the new moon, uh, I think, adds to the uh, the uh, potential here for uh, this, this being a, a, a trading setup uh, for us. Uh, so, you know, we, we need to do more fine tuning here, but that's what the, the broad picture looks like. Also, took a, a glimpse here at um, the uh, Mercury retrograde ingress into Virgo that we mentioned. 
And uh, this is a much uh, rarer phenomenon. I think we're dealing with 10, 12 examples, uh, so we don't give this quite as much weight uh, in terms of the, of the history uh, that we're looking at. But typically what happens is about a week after that event, uh, we lo are looking for a trading bottom there, and then again a strong move upward with the S&P. So this gives us a little bit of a fudge factor as we combine these. Uh, we see them overlapping a little bit, uh, and so we're not trying to call this down to the specific day, but just saying that coming out of this weekend, uh, we can look for a big sell-off going in, and then a potential rebound up right around that time. Well, that's really interesting, and uh, I mean, what's so amazing is that, you know, I haven't looked at uh, Combust uh, as often as I used to because when, when uh, Frank Tauscher passed away from the Super Traders Almanac, you know, he basically did all the work, and so me being lazy myself, and I only look at <laughs> patterns, uh, this is really cool to see this. Anyway, we'll take a little break here. We'll be back with Tom <laughs> Tim Buss. So. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly, and he's going to give us a skinny on the Bitcoin. What are you <laughs> seeing, Tim? 
Well, you know, uh, I, I don't have a, a, a totally current chart here. Uh, I didn't get the time to update that, that yet this morning. But we're seeing some interesting action. When I was uh, checking it earlier, uh, we're seeing Bitcoin trading uh, around the uh, $19,300 uh, level. And uh, we've got a couple of, of uh, support zones based on our work with the Kronos planetary price lines. And we've identified one for some time now at 19350 uh, So it's been teasing this a couple of times it has uh, in the last a week or two here dropped below the 19,000 mark uh, creating a little bit of uh, panic among some uh, players there uh, but I'm still watching that as a critical uh, zone uh, if it, we get a little bit of a, a, a divergence from that it's okay uh, if that should seriously break meaning we get three or four consecutive uh, trading uh, days when it does not hit that price level at all uh, then we're looking for a new support zone a little lower at uh, 14,850, uh, which I think would uh, 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 clear the decks a bit with some of the longer term holders. Uh, we'll see how that, that goes. Uh, we did want to point out as well here that uh, we published this uh, forecast uh, about uh, oh, six weeks ago or so, identifying these potential pivot points with Bitcoin. That point B is the one that we're interested in. Uh, that is this Friday. Uh, the 23rd. So we are, uh, from our longer term uh, cycle projections here, uh, uh, watching uh, what we've just been talking about, all, all this uh, clustering effect uh, coming up uh, with the, uh, the, the uh, combust and the uh, uh, inferior conjunction and the equinox and so forth, all jamming in together, uh, potential uh, trading bottom for Bitcoin as well. Uh, so our yeah. strategy here is to kind of uh, tighten our belts, hang on and see if we get a trading bottom in place. If it dips below that uh, uh, 19,350, uh, we're going to uh, kind of ride this one out, I think, for the short term here. So that's what that's, we're looking at. That's really great. Do we have any free webinars coming up? We do indeed. All uh oh, I think we've uh, end of the show's come up. Uh, and I think then we'll also have our bit.ly Tim Larry P. Get on our list for 